Hi, and welcome to the 80th Hammer Tutorial. So, I haven't made a tutorial in a long time, as a lot of you know, and I've gotten a lot of requests for this, which you guys have been very adamant about. A destructible wall that would have debris fly about it. I mean, you can take this information that I'm going to give you in this tutorial, and you can go ahead and make a building out of this. Um, but I'll show you how to make this exactly. Uh, it blows up using these barrels right here, but these barrels are actually just prop dynamics. We'll go over mechanics later, but let me show you exactly what we'll get. Now, as you saw, we had a piece of sheet metal fly over here from the wall. We have pieces of wood that all have physics information. They're funk fizz boxes. So they all interact with the world, and they shot out just like they would if a wall would explode on them. And we have the debris left here, the messed up metal. So sit back, relax, and enjoy how to make a wall that blows up. Alright, so here we are in Hammer. Now you'll notice at the, uh, at the wall here there's quite a lot going on. There are three explosion models. One, uh, these are actually prop dynamics, and there are three Envy explosions to simulate this to give me more control over how the explosions would react instead of using prop physics. Now, on this wall here, there are actually three instances of a lot of things. Um, it's to do with the physics. See on the back side of the wall, it is no drawed because before you can't get out this side without having the wall blown up. So if you use viz groups for this, it'll make your life a lot easier. I have three viz groups total over here. I have the barricade as a whole, um, barricade destroyed, barricade debris, and then barricade strong. So you'll want to be able to turn these on and off how you, how you please. All right. So I'm not going to go ahead and recreate everything. That'll take too long. Um, so you're going to want to create your barricade, the whole thing create the whole thing with all your details and everything on it and create it a funk brush have it start disabled give it your material type and everything I'm sorry have it be a funk breakable and give it your material type and a name and you want to set the flag only break on trigger this will make it so it can't break unless you tell it to if people are going to be able to get on both sides of it make sure that you can see both sides um, and that they look correct now after that you're going to want to copy this off to the side so you can just shift drag it off to the side and then move back to world and then keep that as a reference copy in case you screw something up because you're going to be messing with this a lot. Then after that, you're going to want to go ahead and turn uh, let me just this. You're going to want to put that in this group and then pretty much just shut it off so that way you can't see it. But you want to work with the copy. Now you want to create your destroyed version of it and this will be a funk brush and you want it to start disabled give it a name and everything and you're good with that then now when you create your your destroyed version you'll see here that in my strong version the wood splinters away and some of these metal sheets disappear too um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to keep those pieces that you cut off and keep them because you're going to use them as debris. But what you'll notice with my debris is that the debris is not perfect. As you see here, the debris is in fact brought forward a little bit and it's not touching any of the destroyed part. And the pieces of sheet metal that I wanted to fly backwards are behind the metal wall and some that I want to come forward are in front of the metal wall. It's very important depending on where you want your debris to fly because you're able to get the control of having the debris go where you want, but people really don't know that you, you chose where they go. So save those pieces and then cut them off, basically make them primitive. And each of these, you will want to make a Funk Fizz Box multiplayer. You're going to want to check the debris flag, which is don't collide with the player or other players, or you can have that checked off if you want it really doesn't matter it's all personal preference if you want the player to be able to collide with them uh, set the material type give them a name now after you have them given a name you're gonna want to create a point template so go to your entity maker create a point template and then name it and add all of the debris to the template and you can they can all be named the same thing then you'll want to create your NV explosions where you would like them to be and let's do some output wiring here 
Um, you want to get your viz group selected over on the right side if you if you decided to use them, which I do advise. All right, so you're gonna want to hide your debris. You don't need to see those right now. And on your funk button, add the following: add, unpressed, NV explosion, explode, apply, add, unpressed. You want the funk breakable to break. 0.01 add unpressed you want the broken model to appear at 0.01 add unpressed and you want the point you want the point template to force spawn the props 0.02 and click apply so now what you have is it'll explode at zero, break that one, the model, respawn the new one at the same time. So it just essentially creates that hole, and then it force spawns the debris. And then for the last one, play sound. And then, then that is it. Just you're gonna want to make sure that if you're using models like me that you turn them off 0 0.02 and also disable their collisions zero and for the final output you're gonna wanna add unpressed another explosion at 0 0.01 seconds after you force spawned your debris so it goes explode play sound Disable collisions on my models here. Uh, break the wall. Spawn the new one with the hole in it. Force spawn the props. Uh, turn off my barrel models and then explode once more. The explosions happen so close together that you don't even notice that they're there. So it doesn't really matter. But the first explosion is to basically spawn cover for you to remove the wall and uh, spawn the props. And the second explosion is to actually propel the props so if you want to have two sets of explosions one that does no damage and one that actually does that's fine or you could just have two one that that do half of the damage that you want to do so compiling now and i'll see you in game all right here i am in game uh, we come over here to this button turn into no clip here so i don't die then boom. all right there we go these gibs went forward just a tiny bit, but these ones were propelled all the way back like if they should have been. And we got our hole in the wall with all of our gibs still there. And of course you can do more things with this, like maybe you could have some of these all be like fist box and they can like fall down at random times. Kind of cool. Anyways, uh, this was the 80th tutorial on how to destroy a wall. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.